Good morning. Father Kaz has given me a couple minutes that, to share with you an important announcement about upcoming events. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Sister Mary Miller was here to uh, speak at the communion breakfast, and she noted what a generous parish St. Boniface has always been. And I think we all know that and have experienced it time and time again. And certainly the current initiative, the Faith Forward initiative, has proven again uh, how, how willing you are to give of the gifts that we have in terms of time, talent, and treasure. And I'm here today just to be a reminder for one other way in which you can give your time, talents, and treasures, and that's with the upcoming Summer Festival. Uh, certainly you can give your treasures by buying the tickets that are out there by the door. Lots of good raffle tickets there. You can have dinner with Father Galeen at the Erie Club. You can win tickets to a country concert. And of course you can win cold hard cash. So we encourage you to buy those tickets and to sell some to your friends. Uh, you can give gifts of your time for the festival. Uh, lots of hands are needed to make the festival work. If all you have is a couple of hours, that's great. Uh, you can sign up for those couple of hours on the, the sheet at the end of the pew or the bulletin board uh, poster that's out in the gathering space. If you want to give a whole day, that's even better. Come on down. There's plenty of work to be done, Saturday and Sunday both. This is June 1st and 2nd. Then we come to the gift of talents. That is not a problem at St. Boniface. We have so many talents here. We have people who are great cooks, and there's lots of need for that in the kitchen. We also have people who are good at cleaning up after the cooks, which is a huge need. We also have need for people with a talent in terms of selling tickets. Not everybody is comfortable doing that. Those of you who are, go for it. We have need for uh, people who have the talent of being good at crafts in terms of both putting together the uh, baskets for the basket auction as well as contributing things to the uh, country cupboard booth. We have need for people with a talent as servers to greet our guests and welcome them and provide them with that wonderful chicken dinner and all the fixins as they say at uh, whatever that place is, Cracker Barrel, thank you. Um, we also have need for people to count up all the money that comes in in the ticket envelopes and we need you in the office all day. And last but not least, if you have talent as a baker, you are in the right parish because we need your talents here to bake pies. You can bake big pies for the dessert table. You can bake little pies for the bake sale table, which you'll need to accompany the breads and the cookies and the cakes that you're baking for the bake sale table. Uh, so you get the drift. If you're a baker, uh, please contribute your gifts by bringing those goodies for our festival. Um, all of these talents go together to make a terrific festival, as they always have. And mostly, we encourage you to come. Bring your friends, bring your family, and a pie in each hand, and we'll do great. Thank you. The sun is shining, oh happy day. Uh, you know, hearing your energetic, enthusiastic talk, I can tell you the only talent I bring is I eat anything and everything. <laughs> it's quite obvious. Well, welcome everybody, say hello to those around you, greet them. Hello again, thanks for serving. You promised me you're going to share something here, and you haven't done it yet. <laughs> Let us continue this celebration in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. As we come together to celebrate these great mysteries the Lord has given us, we recognize our unworthiness and ask his forgiveness. God, our Father, you are a loving, forgiving Father. Lord, have mercy. You give us Christ, your only Son, to be our brother and Savior. Christ, have mercy. And your Holy Spirit continues to challenge us to grow in holiness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Paul and Barnabas had proclaimed the good news to that city and made a considerable number of disciples, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. They strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith, saying, It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. They appointed elders for them in each church, and with prayer and fasting commended them to the Lord in whom they had put their faith. Then they traveled through Presidia and reached Pamphylia. After proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work they had now accomplished. And when they arrived, they called the church together and reported what God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. The word of the Lord. Our response is, I will praise your name forever, my God, my King, and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King, and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord. Let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my King and my let them make known your might to the children of Adam and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. A reading from the book of Revelation. Then I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The former heaven and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, God's dwelling is with the human race. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will always be with them as their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes and there shall be no more death or mourning, wailing or pain for the old order has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. The word of the Lord.
My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Don't tell the pastor I read the wrong gospel. <laughs> Well, there was a lady who approaches her priest and tells him, Father, I have a problem. I have two female parrots, but they only know how to say one thing. What do they say, the priest inquired. They only know how to say, Hi, we're hookers. You want to have some fun? That's terrible, the priest exclaimed, but I have a solution to your problem. Bring your female parrots over to my house and I will put them with my two male talking parrots who I have taught to pray and even read the Bible. My parrots will teach your parrots to stop saying that terrible phrase and your female parrots will learn to praise and worship. Thank you, the woman responded, and the next day she brings her female parrots to the priest's house. His two male parrots are holding rosary beads and they're praying in their cage. The lady puts her female parrots in with the male parrots and the female parrots say, Hi, we're hookers. You want to have some fun? And one male parrot looks over at the other male parrot and says, Put the beads away, our prayers have been answered. <laughs> In 1976, a car accident tore open the head of a 21-year-old Chicago boy named Peter. His brain was damaged, and he was thrown into a deep coma. Doctors told Peter's family and friends that he probably wouldn't survive. Even if he did, he'd always be in a coma. One of the people who heard that frightening news was Linda, the girl Peter planned to marry. In the sad days ahead, Linda spent all her spare time in the hospital. Night after night, she'd sit at Peter's bedside pat his cheek, rub his brow, and talk to him. It was like we were on a normal date, she said. But all the while, Peter remained in a coma, unresponsive to Linda's loving presence. Night after night, for three and a half months, Linda sat at Peter's bedside, speaking words of encouragement to him, even though he gave no sign that he heard her. Then one night, Linda saw Peter's toe move. 
A few nights later, she saw his eyelash flutter, and this was all she needed. Against the advice of the doctors, she quit her job and became his constant companion. She spent hours massaging his arms and legs. And eventually, she arranged to take him home. And she spent all her savings on a swimming pool, hoping that the sun and the water would restore life to Peter's motionless limbs. Then came the day when Peter spoke his first word since the accident. It was only a grunt, but Linda understood it. Gradually, with Linda's help, those grunts turned into words, clear words. And finally the day came when Peter was able to ask Linda's father if he could marry her. Linda's father said, when you can walk down the aisle, Peter, she'll be yours. Two years later, Peter walked down the aisle of Our Lady of Mount Pompey Church in Chicago. He had to use a walker, but he was walking. He, in, in, in every television station in Chicago, they covered that wedding. Newspapers across the country carried pictures of Linda and Peter. Celebrities phoned to congratulate them. People from as far away as Australia sent them letters and presents, and families with loved ones in comas, called to ask their advice. Today, Peter is living a normal life. He talks slowly, but clearly. He walks slowly, but without a walker. He and Linda even have a lovely child. The story of Linda and Peter is a beautiful commentary on the words of Jesus. Jesus says what? I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. So you also should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. If there's one thing we need to do today, my friends, is to rediscover the power of love, the kind of love that Jesus preached. The story of Lyndon Peter illustrates that this kind of love has tremendous power, a miraculous power. It has the power to bring people back from the brink of death to life. And it has the power to bring people back from hopeless sickness to perfect health. And it has the power to inspire people the world over and give them new hope, as Linda's love for Peter did. Small wonder, a Hindu in India said to a Christian missionary, if you Christians were like your Bible and loved the way it says to love, you'd convert India in five years. Today people are beginning to worry that we are headed for total extinction. And this danger comes from part of it is lack of human love the kind of love Jesus preached, the kind of love that Linda had for Peter. We desperately need to rediscover love in our times. The Christian community must change our world by an outpouring of human love. And today's gospel is an invitation for us to look into our hearts and to see how we ourselves are answering Jesus' plea by our own lives of love, especially within our own families. For we must begin to change the world there, or we won't change it at all. So let's close with these words by the famous priest scientist de Chardin. Quote, someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for the second time in the history of the world, man will discover fire. Think about it.
Creed, I believe. Being a Christian would be easy if all Christ expected of us was church-related activities. Attending worship services and taking the sacraments make some demands on us, but these have nothing compared to Christ's ultimate challenge, love one another. So let us pray for the strength and resolve to keep Christ's commandment. Our response is, risen Christ, hear our prayer that the church and her leaders throughout the world may follow the example of the apostles, growing in faith despite any kind of trial, we pray to the Lord. For Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, and Mark, our Pastor, that they may lead us all closer to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For blessings on all those working and making a crucio this weekend, especially our Pastor Father Mark, Mike Swarm, Jim Valmont, and Edwin Allgaier, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who aspire to public office, that they may learn that true power is found in service, and true wisdom is found in the Word of God, we pray to the Lord. That the world may see clearly the love we have for the poor, the sick, the oppressed, and the unborn, we pray to the Lord that more young men and women will hear and answer their call to the priesthood, religious life, and the diaconate, we pray to the Lord. That God may bless and prosper all the activities and organizations of our parish, we pray to the Lord. For the quiet prayers within our hearts, we pray to the Lord. For all who have died in our families, parishioners, and friends, that they may be purified of sin and share the joys of heaven, especially Ralph Filipkowski, for whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, love is an empty word until we put it into action in our daily lives. Help us to love those who are near at hand, the people we take for granted, as well as the people we want to avoid. We pray this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to claim you, O Lord, but above all, during this holy season, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 You are indeed holy, O Lord the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, proclaim your death, O Lord. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Lawrence, our Bishop, the clergy, the religious, your entire family. And remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us now pray in the words our resurrected brother taught us. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace. Peace, dear. Thanks for serving. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. sister, the body of Christ, my brother, the body of Christ, my brother, the body of Christ. Amen.
We ask you to please pray for the men of our parish who are making a Gracile this weekend. And speaking of Gracile, I just marvel at your pastor that he works at the Chancery Office all day with marriage tribunal and all those sorts of things. Then he comes here, of course, takes care of all of you beautifully and lovingly. And, uh, you know, that he's just got all of that energy. Uh, I just wish I had some of it. Uh, I also wish I had some of his intelligence, too. So this is uh, Coffee and Donut Sunday. So please stop down in the cafeteria after Sunday Masses for food and fellowship. It helps support our food pantry. And um, when you're there eating your donuts, remember the ones with chocolate frosting on them have my name on it? And if you touch one of them, automatic excommunication. <laughs> Furthermore, as I left for this parish this morning, Father Leo Galena, who resides also at the presence of the priest's retirement home, and he says, now, Cash, you be darn good to those people out there because they're wonderful people. So Leo is still protecting you. <laughs> so let us pray. Isn't she an excellent server? But she's selfish. She will not share some of that hair with me. Yeah, you're working on it. Right, you promises, promises. Yeah, uh huh. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.